Hey, Bob, nice some fucking noise. I said, I said, everybody, make some fucking noise. Chicken nuggets turning chicken fingers. You getting body by a zinger burger. <laughs> What's going on guys? So I wanted to do a new series today and this is going to be episode 1. So if you're tuning in and you're subscribed to the channel, then I really hope you guys enjoy the video and I want to thank you guys for clicking and being a part of the Goth Boy Movement, my own GBC, Goth Boy channel. So let's get into this face melting banger I got today. Um, if you guys have followed any of my videos, you know usually when you hit play, it's like immediately getting whacked in the head with a shovel or thrown down a rocky terrain. Usually it's a moment that will catch you off guard and something you're not prepared for. So I hope I can continue to produce that level of content going forward. I've been sick lately, so it's really kind of been this brick wall in between me and pulling the trigger on my content rifle as much as I usually do. There is a phrase called... Uh, quality over quantity. I find that to be bullshit. And as long as you can learn the perfect balance and blend both, there's no one that can say you can't grab your board and grind all day long. As long as you're not wiping out and there's still fans in the rafters, it's a win-win. But anyways, it brings me to the first video and the first episode of this series. Now, there's one thing we know about Peep. It's the fact that this guy was covered head to toe in tattoos. I mean, he's literally, there's not an empty spot of canvas skin on his body. Everything is filled in from pumpkins to uh, that are really in reference to his birthday of Halloween going into Saint's Day or whether it's this really cool tribal robotic kind of elements on his arm or whether it's just uh, the crybaby drapery that would permanently sit on his face or if it was just stars or broken hearts you guys know he was covered in art. Uh, so whether it looked like something that was drawn on Ink Master or something that looked like a four-year-old finalist in a Crayola Scribble Jam contest could have drawn, the guy had great tattoos. And at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter if some of them look like they were drawn by Picasso or if some look like a tattoo artist drank a bottle of Jameson, smoked two blunts to his face, ate a bag of shrooms, then continued to do the rest of the tattoo with his foot. It doesn't matter. They're still perfect in their own shape and way because they are part of Gus's artistic expression, so we have to embrace them for what they are. I don't have that many tattoos. I have a star on each arm, and that's it. Um, if you guys want to see it, I'll show you a pic here. They're not even colored in, but I've had those for like two years and never got them colored in. But anyways, if you guys notice, on Peep's hand, he has the permanent drapery of the words Glow GBC. So that's exactly what I'm going to name the first episode of this series. It's going to be called Glow Behind the Show. Now, if you guys know, Peep was a guy who toured extensively. If this guy wasn't in a bus, he was in a van. If he wasn't in a van, he was on the stage. If he wasn't in the stage, he was in the dressing room. If he wasn't in the dressing room, he was probably headed up the stairs to go through the curtain to play a show. This guy lived on the road. That had a lot to do with his success, his popularity, and his financial income somewhat being 
pretty stable right towards the time of his untimely passing. So, with that said, we know this guy jumped on private jets and toured Europe, and that's where a lot of the most fascinating things from his creative timeline ever happened, was on foreign soil. If you guys watch my Little Peep's Time in Europe video, you'll see that he always treated uh, the European ticket buyers with fire. He always gave them just a little bit more heat, and he always gave them something to take home much like a 14 karat ring as a gift for buying a ticket and showing up to his gig. He always gave European fans something to remember. Um, like I said before, he didn't treat them any differently from his U.S. fans, but he definitely always had a little bit more fuel in the tank when he got to the gig, and he always gave them just a little bit more excitement, and he always played rare stuff. So whether it was the final, the song they played live, whether it was one of the finals Better Off Dying, or in today's instant, the final Worlds Away. Now, Worlds Away is not only a song that fucking instantly punches you in your face and throws you through the wall. It's also a song that can really break your heart and make you cry by the same line. It's a great song. Not only is it fan-friendly and very pop-accessible, it really is a window into Peep's initial mainstream stardom and how good he was at taking this underground style but still could reach Billboard with it. This is a song that could have really got Peep on TRL doing interviews without changing a thing about his underground songwriting. He was such a great Great original artist. Um, so let's get into this video, man. This is in September 19th in Warsaw, in Europe, and it's the last time Peep ever played Worlds Away. She 